Today, we're going to talk about how I edit those warm, dreamy, rich browns and kind of like deep orange photos for those family images that we got or maybe some branding sessions. They're just like a cool way to add a little bit of nostalgia feeling to some photographs. But for those of you who are impatient and just want it now, I also have this preset linked in the description. So if you just want to know the process behind it, you can skip to this timestamp where I'll be right in Lightroom and I'll talk about it. Before that, here's how I kind of think about things going into the photo shoot if I know that this is what I want my photos to end up looking like. So there are certain subjects and settings I think lend themselves over to this kind of like uh, beige, uh, warm, creamy, dreamy editing style. Uh, first one I think is families, specifically families or even weddings or anything outside really that's set in golden hour or around that time um, because your color balance is already going to skew a little bit warmer uh, due to the nature of that time of day. And what happens with uh, this editing style, um, we're getting into some color theory here, but it also lends itself to being a little bit more of a like uh, nostalgia based color. Like we're able to like look at these photographs um, and you're able to invoke a little bit more nostalgia. So it worked very well for family photos, um, especially since you want to invoke uh, nostalgia at a later date in time when they look back at those images, right? Uh, we don't just want our, you know, family photos to live on people's phones. We want them to get printed and hung on the walls, right? Now, the second subject matters uh, that I think that this works good for is uh, interior design shots um, or branding shots, specifically if you can style your subjects um, so that they're not just wearing black or white. Um, but if it's part of their branding and they have that kind of like boho style going on, for everything then i think this lends itself to it very well also if you're providing branding content they're probably going to want that across everything as well and they're probably already using a lot of browns or, or like a lot of like earth tone colors and so earth tone colors even if they don't fall on the like same side of the color wheel they'll still contrast very well and go with each other so even if there's some like greens uh, that are earth tones or or like a dusty purple uh, they'll also go alongside this when you're thinking about how this lands on a website or an Instagram or print materials or things like that. Um, that being said, I think you're gonna get a lot more richer colors if you expose properly, meaning like your histogram looks like it's kind of like living right in the center there. And if you don't know what histograms are, you should go watch my video about histograms before you get any further into this, because it's gonna show you how to get properly exposed photos every single time. I also think that if you expose to the left a little bit without clipping your low lights, that this is actually where this kind of style shines because it also gives a lot of depth and mood. And so when the luminance of certain colors, especially the dark side of things, has a lot more black in it than if you were to expose, you know, to the right, which is also in style now, but we're not editing for that. That's a different video. Nothing wrong with exposing to the right. Just for these sets of images, they tend to be a little bit more moody. You know, we're talking about the black side of the luminance spectrum. And we're going to have a lot more rich and depth to those colors that we can pull out. And we always want to be shooting raw, especially if we know we're going to do some heavy editing on the back end. Now, let's jump into Lightroom and I'm going to show you how I begin editing. All right, so I'm in Lightroom now. Everything is as shot. And the only thing I did, and you can see here, if I go onto my healing and clone stamping tools, is I got rid of some bugs that were in the shot and some stray hairs. It's the only thing I've done so far. So we're gonna first off get the crop right because this is just a little bit off for me. So what I like to do in a family shot like this is just make sure that mom and dad um, are on the thirds here because not you know not everybody is is gonna be perfectly centered in shots like this. Um, but I like that crop right there. So we're gonna put that down and go full screen now. So now that we're in here and we can go through um, and do those warm, rich, creamy edits, the first thing I wanna do is just show you my uh, histogram here. So up in the right hand corner, we have our histogram and you can see what I've done um, is I've exposed to the left. And that's generally my natural tendency. It's my wife's natural tendency when she shoots. Actually, I think she's the one who shot this photo. Um, but we always tend to expose over to the left a little bit just because we like to naturally preserve the kind of shadows and everything. Um, there's no, like exposing to the right, exposing for the center, exposing to the left. It's just a preference thing, but you know, if you're gonna do moody photos, you're already most of the way there if you expose to the left. Um, as long as you're not clipping left or right in your histograms. And if you don't know about histograms, 
I have another video on histograms. So you should go check that out on the channel. If it's not out yet, it will be soon. So here's what I want to do here. Um, I'm going to go through and just get the basic light edits done. Now you can see just by looking at the histogram, but also just looking at the photo itself, the photo is just a little bit hazy. So what I want to do is I want to kind of spread our histogram out. And the way that we can spread our histogram out and take this photo from flat to being a little bit more contrast, boost our contrast a little bit. And as you can see, um, it's breaking our histogram apart and beginning to shove the stuff that's in the center out to the far right and out to the far left. So I'm gonna boost the contrast there. I think that's about good. And I'm gonna use my eye toggler here. Yeah, and you can see we've kind of eliminated that kind of gray haze that's over everything. That's like making it feel flat. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bump my shadows down just a little bit. I think that's pretty good. And my blacks. So the shadows are gonna be moving everything in the like um, the left third over. Um, if you think about the your histogram being broken up into four sections and so the blacks are going to move everything on the like the left quarter over to the edge and I want to get pretty close as close as I can to the edge without clipping there uh, and I would like to keep my blacks to be like a true black I know some people like that kind of like dusty gray almost asphalt uh, tone to the black and it's fine you can do that. And here's how you do that. You just take your uh, curve tool up here and you just, you know, slide up to like 2.0. And all that does is just kind of cl clip your blacks and push them, uh, remap your darkest point to be just kind of a little bit more gray than a true black. I don't like that, so I'm going to keep it here, but that's a preference thing. All right. Um, and then highlights. Everyone's faces are looking just a little bit flat, so I want to add a little bit more in there. And I'm going to click this tool up here to see where I'm clipping because again we uh we don't really want to clip anywhere if we can help it um and as you can see we can boost the highlights a little bit and we're only clipping kind of like in the rim light here where the backs of their heads are being illuminated so I'm comfortable with that um because that should probably be the brightest part anyway it's going to help them like remove them from the background and separate them so I'd say I'm pretty happy with just our um our lighting edits right here. The other thing I'm going to do real quick um, is I'm just going to brighten up the exposure on their faces a little bit. I'm just doing one quick touch on the face here. Um, and I'm going to bump the exposure maybe like plus 40 or so. And let's take a look at that. Yeah. It's subtle, but I think it does a lot. So actually, let's let's move it back. We can always put it um, forward a little bit. So maybe about 35, like we'll split the difference. In. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Uh, we did lose a little bit of contrast in the eyes, but we can come back and fix that later. Eyes and teeth are the thing that I do at the very end. So I'm going to just rename this face brighten. Uh, and label your mask so you know where everything is. So now we're in the color section and I want to make any adjustments that I need to make. I want to do here is just make sure that everything is good um, and look natural to the eye when you're looking at it here. And I think it does. I think our camera did a good job just leaving it on auto there. So as shot, like it. And so now what I want to do is I want to open our color mixer and I do this um, for a few different reasons. I start here. Um, what I want to do is I actually desaturate my greens just a little bit and you'll see um, in the background here that's where toggle on off on off um, that's kind of what it looked like to my eye when I was there um, and I'm actually gonna move the greens over sh like shift the cue over towards yellow a little what happens if I boost the luminance um, I like that too there's a pretty good kind of washed out green looking feeling there and that's fine because this is a fall family photo uh, so what I'm also going to do is shift yellows just a little bit over to the orange. Not much, not much at all. So then when we come back here on, off, on, off. And what we've done is kind of begin to make our palette look a little bit more, um, like a, like a analogous color scheme here. 
So all kind of like colors that are on the same side of the color wheel with just with those simple uh, adjustments there because we're pushing things over towards the warm side to create more separation from what little things that are actually cool in the picture. Um, so all that stuff around this blue area, uh, this teal area would just be like maybe their, their jackets. And I, yeah, I don't want to mess with their jackets or their clothes or anything like that. I think that they actually picked out and styled themselves very well. Um, and now here's where the biggest magic happens down in the color grading panels. Um, and now it's really easy to overdo this. If you mess up, you can always reset it, but we want to think about contrast here. So we thought about contrast in terms of light and those val and like tonal values, but we want to think about it in terms of hue as well. So what I'm going to do here is start with the highlights. And most people's skin tones, right, because we have blood running through our veins under our skins, there's a lot of oranges and reds in them. So what I like to do um, <clears throat> is bring the highlights over to orange on the color wheel and then bring them up here. I don't like to let them get too much into the yellows. Uh, if you get them too much red, then uh, that doesn't look natural. And if you go too yellow, it looks like everyone has jaundice. So <laughs> You want to keep it right in that kind of like orange, just on the edge of the red area there. All right, and we can always come down and adjust it. I actually think that might be a little bit too much. So you can see it's just really adjust, adjust, adjusting the saturation um, and adding a little bit of those colors to all of the tones that would be in our highlights, all of the colors that would be in the highlight spectrum. So. We want to also do that same thing in the mid-tones here, and you'll see it's starting to make a pretty big difference, right? Mid-tones are really where I like to push it just a little bit further. Um, I'm going to pull this just a little bit over here. We can always back off a little bit later. If you want to push it really hard, you can. I don't want to push it too, too hard. Right? And then... It's looking very flat again in terms of color now. Um, so in the shadows, uh, in order to create some more uh, contrast in terms of color, we want to go to the opposite side of the color wheel here. And so what I'm going to do is add this kind of like, you know, purpley blues over here into the shadows. And what you can see is that creates just a little bit of a contrast there. And so here's the before, right? looking again it looks okay it looks stylized now because of what we did to the greens and what we did to the yellows but then if we put this on here we've injected a little bit more uh orange into the whole thing and then in the undertones there's a little bit more blues which creates um, a lot of separation in terms of color um while still feeling pretty like analogous in terms of its color scheme and now i would say this is a pretty close to done photo um, the only thing I'm going to do is you'll notice sometimes people's um, eyes or um, their teeth, right? When we up the exposure on their faces a little bit, um, get just a little bit washed out. And so what I want to do is just add just a, a little bit of uh, brightness and contrast back in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new brush. I mean, a new mask with a brush. Um, and I'm going to paint in some of the eyes here now i'll fast forward through this so uh yeah i'm pinwheeling now i need a new computer um but if you have a newer computer like the one i have uh, my main work computer um you'll actually be able with the newest lightroom to actually just like auto select everybody's like eyes and not only just their eyes but like different portions of their eyes so you'll be able to select you know just the iris if you need to but i'm gonna select the whole eye here because there's a little trick that I do. And in case you have like a crappy computer, like the one I'm working on, or you're working on like mobile on your phone for some reason, like maybe you're traveling and you're like in, you know, like her mobile. Um, you yeah, know, you can do this. <clears throat> All right. So mask there. What I'm going to do is I like to increase the texture and the clear oh not to 100 sorry like plus 10 plus 20 right and that makes our eyes pop just a little bit and what i'm also going to do 
is all right i'm going to add sorry here's my light panel i'm going to add just a little bit of contrast in there so the darts are dark the whites are white and there's a little bit more clarity in the eyes and so here's the before see what i mean about uh the eyes before and after there it looks a little bit washed out now they look a little bit more natural or the way that we remember eyes so i'm just going to rename this eyes done i'm going to create another mask and you can do this so here's one thing that happens if you're using the global color um sometimes you can inject orange or yellows into people's teeth and so uh what you can do here there we go we're gonna create a new mask and i'm just gonna brush some of these teeth real quick no pun intended and i want to not hit the lips or the gums um because what we're gonna do if we hit the lips or the gums it's gonna really like desaturate the color in them. Uh, we don't wanna do that. We just wanna adjust just a little bit of the color uh, for the global edits that we did. And again, if you have the newer Lightroom, uh, you can do this automatically. Well, let me just show you what this does to the teeth real quick. So I'm gonna put the exposure at like 0.2, enter. And all that does is just brighten up the teeth just a little bit. And you can actually go a little bit further um and you can turn the saturation down to like minus 10 and so let's turn our mask on and off you know off on off on not the biggest difference in the world um but that's also how you touch up people's teeth if they ever request like oh can you you know touch up teeth or you know if your color balance is just a little bit off but it actually looks good and you're like ah, oh, but it's affecting their pupils or it's affecting their teeth um you can go through just push everything up in here do some touch-ups Alrighty, so there we go but let's turn off our clipping and we'll check out just like the before right after so we got rid of some of that haze uh, before after and you can even see that's where i touched up some of the flyaways before and some of those bugs out there so i think there's pretty close to it um like i said you want to if you don't want to edit like this or like maybe you think your pictures are too far gone um i would check out um my video on histograms and that's how to expose going into uh taking a photo as opposed to after hey one way that you can support this channel for free is if you give me a thumbs up or you subscribe share this with a friend um or leave me a comment just that just says thanks or you know ask a question like those are those are awesome ways to support me um and let me know you're doing a bad job or a good job. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. And if you don't want to go through this process, uh, I have some presets that you can buy down in the link in the description. Uh, that is growing. I have a lot on my plate right now, so that may take a little bit of time. And if you're watching like years later afterwards, then and it's like grown to like a million presets and stuff like that, you're welcome, I guess. I don't know. I'm rambling now. I should just stop. Video's over.